Alright, so this is the instrument that you're bidding on. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it and then do some playing demos for you. I'll play acoustic, electric, and while electric I'll do some clean and distortion. So, just some of the key features on this. Number one are the uh, high quality woods that I use. I use genuine Honduran mahogany on the neck. Honduran is the highest quality mahogany for musical instruments. There's a few different kinds of mahogany. Um, Asian mahogany is the most common that you'll see in the lower end guitars, but as you get up towards like the Gibson level, you'll see a lot more Honduran mahogany than anything else. It's by far the best type of mahogany for musical purposes. I've got a rosewood fretboard, um, and then up here we've got a bird's eye maple headstock. I like bird's eye maple, A, because it's a hard maple. Hard maple always sounds good. And you can see that bird's eye grain on this. Bird's eye um, is a type of grain pattern. And I'm sure you can't see it very well in the video, but it, go ahead and check out the pictures that I've got up there to check out the grain. It's very unique, very cool. It's my favorite grain pattern, and I'm sure you'll agree with me after you see it. Um, I like using the higher quality wood such as the hard maple, Honduran mahogany, and rosewood because they definitely add to the tone quality and character of the guitar. Um, well, first of all, you don't see many guitar cigar box guitars made out of these types of woods. And they did, like I said, they add to the tone and just everything that would qualify a guitar as being high quality. They add, they make it sound better, they give it better sustain, more volume. Everything about the sound is improved when you improve the quality of wood. You can see we've got um, perloid inlays, a working volume, uh, working volume knob, the rose, uh, sorry, the nut and the bridge are also made out of rosewood. Down here in the tailpiece, I've driven in four steel tubes. They just kind of reinforce the tailpiece under all the string tension to, to keep any damage from happening. And they also keep the strings from digging into the rosewood. Keep it, your guitar looking nice for a long time. This um, support right here, this tan piece of wood is poplar. Um, I want to talk about the inside a little bit. If you check out the other video, you'll like I took that video during construction, so I'm showing you the inside, but I'm just going to give you just a generalization, and if you want a more in-depth explanation, which I recommend you watch it if you're planning on bidding, you can check out that other video. But I use something called a sound post and a bass bar. I'm not going to go in-depth to explain that. If you want to check out the other video, I do an in-depth explanation of what they are. But basically what they are is the sound post is a, almost a dowel that runs from the back of the guitar to the face. I make it myself out of Spanish cedar. And the bass bar is a long curved strip of wood. I also make that out of Spanish cedar that runs along the face of the guitar. Um, the sound post just transfers vibrations from the face to the back to make the guitar vibrate more evenly. Instead of just the face vibrating and the vibrations kind of spreading to the back. Now you got the face and the back vibrating and aka more volume, better sustain, uh, better tone. It also supports the bridge to keep the face from bowing inward. If you know anything about music theory, then you, you understand that if you've got a chord, the lower notes, the bass notes, are supposed to be a little bit louder than the higher notes to have a nice sounding balanced chord. You don't want all the notes to be the same volume. And to achieve this effect, I use a bass bar. Um, that's the long curved strip of wood that runs across the inner face. Um, that just kind of spreads, it's offset slightly to the bass side. It's um, just right along the two bass strings. That just spreads the bass vibrations out um, evenly across the face to make them come out a little bit more. And since the cigar box guitar is a mainly chordal instrument, I figured that that's just a no-brainer to add that feature to give it a better sound. Um, sound post and bass bar, not my idea. Those have been used on violins, cellos, and instruments of that sort for centuries, all the way back before the time of Stradivarius, a uh, famous violin maker from the 1700s. But th those have just always been a standard in those types of instruments. Um, they've been used for hundreds of years. 
Um, it's just a concept that I took from violin making, and if you read the description, then you know that I actually tinker in violin making, and that's where I got the idea. Um, the my piezos, I don't put one piece in, but I put two in. I put them right under the bridge, and I figure since the face of the guitar is getting the vibration through the bridge, then why not put the piezos right under the bridge to get the best sound quality? You're going straight to the source of the vibrations. <coughs> Um, doing this, I've been able to, to achieve, obviously, better tone, more sustain, more volume, because it's just picking up the vibrations more evenly. And since I'm using two, that just allows me to get a little more volume, and it really picks out all the different colors of the tone. Um, one piece of guitars, are, I'm not saying that they're muddy or anything like that, they're, they often sound very good, but you just get a lot more clarity out of having two pieces in there. It's definitely a feature that positively affects the sound of the guitar. My floating neck design, essentially what that means is there is no part of the neck wood touching or glued to the back. You can hear that sounds totally hollow, and there is no neck wood glued to or touching the top, the face. Again, sounds completely hollow. I attach the neck to the sides and I slot it or notch out the wood so that none of it is touching the face and none of it is touching the back. This just allows the face and the back to vibrate more freely, just to resonate more openly and achieve better tone, better sound. Obviously, vibration is sound, so making the thing vibrate more is going to make it sound better. So, I think that's about it, so I'll play for you. I'll do some quick acoustic and then I'll switch to the amp. Piezos kind of have a bad rap for being quiet, not on my guitars. I can actually, um, a lot of my cigar box guitars will be louder than a standard electric guitar with magnetic pickups. Not a lot, just a little bit, but that kind of proves that if you know how to wire the guitar correctly and know proper placement of the piezos and just how to build the guitar in a good sounding way, it can be just as loud if not louder than a standard electric guitar. <coughs> on this is the perfect height. It's just low enough as to where you can play comfortably and easily with your fingers, no problem. You can hear I can play nice and fast. Just easy, effortless playing with your fingers, and then it's just the right height as to where you can also comfortably and easily play with the slide. So, now I'll play a little electric. Excuse that little mistake.
mistake in the middle there. I admit I'm a better builder than player. But that's the guitar. It sounds great. They always do. <laughs> so happy bidding.